Chase, the team is making its way off of the field here at Memorial Stadium as Nebraska closes out a 14-7 win over Rutgers. The Huskers improve to 5-1 on the season. And this performance, all about the defense. Rutgers got the ball time and time again in the second half. Nebraska was looking at a shutout potentially. They did pop one score to make it a one possession game late, but this unit, the Blackshirts, was not going to give in as they held firm. There was pressure on Ethan Kalikbeck Manis, the Rutgers quarterback, and then Kyle Manange, the very talented running back. He was good in the first quarter after that, so silent. That's because of the tackling of Nebraska and the scheme of Tony White. He made a very key adjustment mid-game. He went from a three-down lineman uh, defensive front to four, and Nebraska loaded the box. They dared Rutgers to throw the football. They were unsuccessful for, for most of the game doing so, and Nebraska hangs on for a 14-7 win. Kevin, you talked about Tony White. He was shining on the sidelines today, but just players stepping up on defense from James Williams having two sacks. Sia Wright getting his first interception as a Nebraska Cornhusker. Just felt like the black shirts were the story today. Maybe talk a little bit more about the defense performance and what you saw from the seventh floor at Memorial Stadium. Well, Nebraska's defense really dared Rutgers to throw the football. They made him a bit one dimensional and throwing the football was a challenge for the Scarlet Knights. One, because it was very windy here. There were gusts up to 30 miles per hour. And secondly, Nebraska's pass rush was just violent. It was a number of guys. James Williams got home for a pair of sacks. Nash Hupmaker had a sack. Ty Robinson had a sack. And the number finishes with four sacks. But the amount of times that Kalikak Manis went to the ground, I'd put it in double figures. He was constantly under duress. And you mentioned Sierra Wright. I think this defensive backfield for Nebraska played extremely well today. Wright had a pass breakup in the end zone. He also had a pass breakup on Rutgers' final drive of the game. Remember, the Scarlet Knights got the ball with two minutes left at their own 13-yard line. They had an opportunity to drive the field and potentially threaten Nebraska because this, after all, was a close game. That's a dirty word around these parts, but the Huskers able to get it done. The Scarlet Knights got one first down, but their fourth down play, their final play from scrimmage chase, it was fourth and 10, and this crowd, which is pretty lively today, they felt pretty good about Nebraska's chances, and when that pass fell incomplete, there was a huge roar and a bit of an exhale as the Huskers win 14 to 7 over Rutgers. Kevin, you know, we talk a lot about the defense, not the best performance offensively, but there was some things you liked to see in the first half. Just what got clicking for Dante Dowdell? He found the end zone once and it felt like Ramir Johnson and Janiren Bonner really had the running game going compared to where we usually see Riola really airing it out a ton. Yeah, and Nebraska's offense was put in some pretty challenging spots. This was a field possession uh, kind of game, a field position kind of game, uh, I should say. And Nebraska's offense was operating out of its own back end so many times. So uh, they weren't able to open up the playbook completely, though we did see a few wrinkles from Marcus Satterfield's uh, offense. On the ground, Nebraska tried to run the game, uh, run the ball. They had some success with it, but not consistently throughout the entire game. And that run game needed to be important because this was... Without question, Dylan Riola's uh, poorest performance. I hate to use the word poor because he's a freshman and Nebraska still won the game. But compared to UTEP, compared to Colorado, compared to Purdue, Riola finishes 13 of 27 for 134 yards. He had an interception, no touchdown passes for the young quarterback. Uh, but he still operated this offense. Again, uh, Riola was backed up. And you could tell that he didn't maybe play with the same confidence he did earlier in the season. But I suspect he's going to take this result all day long, and it's a happy locker room for the Huskers. Uh, Ramir Johnson finishes as Nebraska's leading ball carrier. He goes for 40 yards on three carries. Ja'Cory Barty Jr. was next in line, three carries for 28 yards. That's a wide receiver getting it done on the ground game for Nebraska. All right, Kevin, we'll leave you at Memorial Stadium. We're still waiting on Matt Rule to hit the podium. We'll try to bring you that if possible when it comes. Let's look at the stats for today's game. Nebraska dominates the time of possession slightly, but it really just all came down to a defensive battle overall. 
Um, and only 78 rush yards for Kyle Manungai, who is a talented running back, one of the best in the Big Ten. In terms of passing stats, Kevin hinted at it. Dylan Rayola, not his best performance. The freshman quarterback, though, only turns the ball over once and has a clean sheet the rest of the way. The running game for Nebraska was pretty good down the stretch. Dante Dowdell found the end zone on fourth down. As you see there, Kyle Manungai, only 78 yards, and Nebraska still has not allowed a rushing touchdown this season. Through the air today, receiving Ben Black had a late touchdown for Rutgers, which made things interesting in the fourth quarter. Jalen Lloyd, two catches, including one from Brian Buscini. Overall, an interesting day, but not a very offensive day for the Huskers. 